Hello everyone! Happy Tuesday and happy So What Day! I hope that you're having a great start to your week. It is back to school season, if there's a season for that. I guess it's just back to school time. And all the kids are starting to head back into the classrooms and teachers are getting ready. Um, it's exciting stuff, you know? It's it's new beginnings and reinventing yourselves and whether or not you have some littles or know of some littles that are heading back to school or big kids or teachers, uh, you know, it's just kind of a different feeling in the air, you know? We're starting to get into fall, um, you know, even though it's still hot as blazes in a lot of the country right now. Um, you know, we kind of have fall to look forward to and cooling temperatures are at least on the horizon, maybe within reach. We'll see. Um, but at any rate, I was at the fabric store just yesterday and Halloween is everywhere. It is sparkly pumpkins, lots of glitter, um, lots and lots of gold uh, coming back on the scene. I really see it trending for Halloween. Um, you know, gold flecked uh, fake flowers and, you know, pumpkins and gourds and things like that. So that always gets me into the fall spirit. Um, I love Halloween. I love sewing for Halloween. Um, you know, if you're a veteran So What viewer, you know this about me because I'm always talking about making costumes and decorating for, you know, fun, spooky activities. And I happen to see sugar skull motifs everywhere. Sugar skull shaped mugs, sugar skull um, stuff in the cake decorating department, all kinds. So it's really fitting and timely that today is our In the Hoop Sugar Skulls webcast with Sue Overy of Suki Sews. Sue is going to be joining us at 2 p.m. Eastern Time today over at sewingonline.sulky.com. This is a free webcast. All you have to do is register. You can either join us live or you can watch the event on demand after the live event is over. And uh, we are going to be joined by Sue Overy, like I said, of Suki Sews. If you've never taken a class from Sue, you will absolutely love her energy and her teaching style. And she's just a great, great human on top of a really great designer um, and really great with machine embroidery. You know, machine embroidery tutorials are not super, super prevalent out there in the world. I mean, here at Sulky, we do them all the time, of course. Um, but Sue is just so great at explaining how to navigate your machine um, and, you know, how to work with different stabilizers. And this In The Hoop project features three designs that cover up an air freshener, a tree air freshener. You can also use those circular air fresheners will fit. Um, there's also square air fresheners that I think are at Bath & Body Works, things like that. But if you're not into air fresheners, see here's how they work. You fit the tree inside of two layers of our cute sugar skulls and pull the tree string out through the top. So your cute cover conceals those ugly little trees or what have you. And then they also smell really great. They're made of sulky felty, uh, which is our really, really great embroidery felt. It is much softer and nicer than the stiff uh, craft felt that you'll find out there at the craft stores. And it's meant to take a lot of needle penetrations and accept a lot of thread without buckling or puckering. So it's a really fantastic embroidery medium. And also the felty allows the scent to come through, uh, but also filters it just a little bit as well. If you are not into the air fresheners, which you know, we used to hang them in our cars, 
Um, but you can also hang them from like your gear shift or uh, the back of your vehicle somewhere. Um, I know some states you're not supposed to hang anything from your rear view mirror, but traditionally that's where those little trees would go. And these are just much cuter and much more festive. But if you're not into those air fresheners, because I know some people have, you know, sensitivities to those strong smells, you can also use it as a little candy pouch and hand that to, you know, your loved ones, your littles for Halloween time, maybe even make them for their classroom. If their class has a little Halloween party, super, super cute. You can also use them as a gift tag and wrap them around a little gift bag or put them on a gift. You can also use them as little lollipop covers. I absolutely love this. You can get, uh, you know, these round lollipops or oftentimes they have those bigger flat lollipops uh, even for Halloween time and those make a great party favor as well. And you can stick the little lollipop stick through that upper edge opening and it's the perfect little lollipop cover gift to give away. Absolutely love that idea. So lots of different ways you can use your air freshener covers. And of course, we have a kit available for today's project. It is on sale for an amazing deal. You get all these colors of Sulky Felty, so you can kind of mix and match and make the air freshener covers or, you know, candy covers in the colors of your choice. You also get a six pack of Sulky Neon Thread. That's the fun thread we're going to be using to create these sugar skulls. You'll also get a bobbin thread and a white and black Sulky Poly Deco thread. So lots of different threads uh, for you to play with and construct your sugar skulls. We'll be building those sugar skulls on Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer. The Stiffy is a tearaway stabilizer, but it allows you to have a little bit more structure for your sugar skulls. Ooh, you can also make them into a garland and uh, put them on your mantle or what have you for the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, or even just Halloween decor. You'll also get a pack of needles as well. We always recommend that you start a new project with a brand new needle just to avoid any pitfalls you could encounter uh, with your new stitch out. All right, so that is happening today, 2 p.m. Eastern time, Sugar Skulls in the Hoop. These are the three different designs that you will get with purchase of the kit. You can also purchase the designs separately. So if you have all the felty that you could possibly, you know, handle, uh, you can just buy the design collection as well. But it does come with purchase of the kit, so you get it at a great, great deal when you purchase all of that together. All right, not to mention, as soon as you register for the Sugar Skulls webcast, you will get this very cute applique caramel apple design absolutely for free, just as a thank you for registering for today's event. And that comes right from Suki Sews. So we thank her very much for providing that to everybody who registers. All right, so again, 2 p.m. Eastern time today, make sure you are registered, even if you can't attend live, because once our live event ends, then the video of our live event becomes an on-demand offering, and you can watch it at any time. So if you purchase up your kit today, it doesn't arrive for a few days, you can go back to the event page and watch as Sue takes you through the entire stitch out process with all of her tips and tricks along the way. And then you can, you know, watch it kind of like a sew along while you are constructing your sugar skulls. So really, really great opportunity to take a free class from Sue Overy um, and, you know, have the designer herself walking you through the process step by step. All right. So I hope you all love that cute little caramel apple as well. I can't wait to see what you'll create with it. You can add a little bow to it or keep it alone. 
You can string those up like a cute little garland or probably also gift that along with a cute little lollipop or something like that. So lots of options for everything to do today during our webcast. Um, in the spirit of back to school, I have a really cute project to take you through today. I'm going to take you through it rather quickly only because today is a live webcast day and as soon as we finish here, I've got to hop on over to our platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. Make sure everything is buttoned up and ready to go for you all when we go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So today's uh, project is a little bit of a quickie project, but be sure to be chatting in our live chat or in the comments below, depending on if you're watching us on Facebook Live or watching us on YouTube Live. Either way, you need to make sure to either like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that way you will be automatically eligible once you comment, give me an emoji, somehow engage with the post. You'll be automatically eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a three-yard pack of Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Make sure that you've either liked the Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel, depending on where you watch from. And then be sure to comment and give me those emojis and engage with the post. That's all you have to do to be eligible to win today's gifty. We will pick one winner at random from all the people who are engaging with the post. All you have to do is even say hello if you don't have a question for me and uh, you could be a winner. Because today we are gonna be making a project using the Fusible Web, and the Fusible Web is our cute little applique face that goes on our brand new Pencil Pillow Pal pattern. This is designed by Chelsea Briner of So Simple Home, and it's the cutest thing on the planet. It's a great back to school gift, a great gift for a teacher who might be setting up their rooms this week or want to add this to their cozy corner or their reading nook in their classroom. It's so adorable. And you can personalize it in many ways. You can create it just like this, like a pencil with a you know dark gray uh, lead tip, or you can create a colored pencil and do, let's say, a red tip with red fabric down the center so it looks like a colored pencil. All different ways of personalizing this. Um, I also know teachers who, when they do story time or reading time, they take turns reading so they could pass around the pencil pillow pal depending on whose turn it is to read. So this is just such a great you know, educational tool as well as just a cute little pillow to display as well and it comes together really, really simply. All right, so first things first, you are going to gather your materials for the pillow project. And the pattern is absolutely free. It's at sulky.com. I also linked directly to it in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing the full description, uh, be sure to hit the little see more button on the lower uh, corner of the video and the whole description will pop out. You'll see all the links to everything I'm gonna talk about today, including links for the free Pillow Pal pattern, links to sign up for today's candy, co candy corn, what? Today's Sugar Skulls webcast. Last year we did a candy corn clutch webcast with Suki Sews, and I think I just went back in time a full year. Sorry about that. You could also, still register for the candy corn clutch if you so desire um, at sewingonline.sulky.com. All right, at any rate, be sure to hit that button so you can see links for everything I'm talking about today. So, Sulky Felty. I talked about this a little bit when I was talking about our sugar skulls because that's what we're gonna use to build that in the hoop project. Well, the Sulky Felty is also used for the little eraser portion of the Pillow Pal. So you can see the little pink at the bottom 
That's all made out of sulky felty. It's just the perfect texture um, and looks just like a pink eraser on the bottom of a pencil. So that's what we're going to use for that portion. The rest is made out of quilting cotton fabric. And then the face applique is also made out of sulky felty. So if you have some little remnants of sulky felty, you can create your little eyes, make your cute little personality however you choose, give them some little cheeks, and then I'll go through the applique steps momentarily. So the applique is done out of felty and that little eraser piece. All right, you also need some perfect applique, of course, for the applique portions of your pillow pal. And then you can do your applique by hand, which is what is uh, what the designer intended. Um, some quick little whip stitches or running stitches or back stitches, just simply by hand. Uh, you could also do a blanket stitch to secure your facial features, or you could do that applique by machine. All you have to do is make sure you have a large enough needle for that 12 weight cotton thread. You could certainly use a 50 weight cotton thread, which is what we're going to use to construct the pillow pal. But I love using a thicker weight thread when we're using that really thick felty material. It just blends in a little bit better. Um, it gives you really great coverage. Um, and if you wanted to create some details within the eyes, things like that, you'll just be able to see it better with the 12 weight cotton thread. So if you do want to do your applique by machine, you're going to need a size 100 organ needle, 116 to be exact. Um, that way the needle eye is large enough to accommodate the thread thickness when you're doing the applique. I would still use the 50 weight cotton thread in the bobbin, which again is what we're going to use when we construct the pillow itself. That way you have a nice balance stitch. You don't want to use that 12 weight thread in the bobbin. It's just too thick for the applique stitches and it'll create kind of a bump, if you will, um, along the facial features. So if you are going to use um, or do the applique by machine, 12 weight in the needle, use a bigger needle, the size 100 and 50 weight in the bobbin. But we will get to that more as well. You'll also gather your fabrics, of course, for the rest of the pillow. And all of that is outlined in the supply list um, when you pick up your free pattern at sulky.com. So the first part of constructing is the pencil tip, okay? So it's, you know, the tan part of the pencil and then the pencil lead piece. And all these pieces are also included in the pattern. So you need to print out those particular pages of the pattern, make sure you're printing it at 100%, not fitting it to page. That way everything's going to fit together nicely. So if you want to create a traditional pencil, you'll have like a gray piece of fabric, dark gray or even black, or you can use a blender. Um, you could even probably use like a batik, what might be cool. And then you want a tan fabric for the you know, part of your pencil that's a little bit larger. So notice how these two pieces don't really fit together because we have curves, right? We have a concave curve and a convex curve. So what you wanna do is place your pieces right sides together and match them along the center of each piece. So you can fold them in half, mark the center, however you wanna find the center of those pieces and pin just along that center point. So that's the point that's going to be um, sort of our match point for gauging the rest of the curve. So now that you have that pinned, you can maneuver your corner point, just one point at this point, at this time, <laughs> and put that piece under the presser foot. Nothing else is going to look like it matches up while you're sewing it yet. So match up your corner points with that center pin still in place, and you can begin sewing your seam allowance 
moving the top fabric to match the other curve as you sew. Hopefully that makes sense. Then when you get to the center point, you can remove that pin and then continue maneuvering along the curve. It's going to feel weird while you're doing it, but once you press it away from the seam allowance, it's all going to make sense. So then you can set aside that piece and we will work with the main pillow piece. So here's where you get to really have fun with it. You can choose any fabric print of your choice. You can do a super traditional uh, pencil and choose, you know, a more yellow, like number two pencil color for the main part of your uh, pencil pillow. And then you'll be adding a straight strip. This is the edge of your eraser. So again, if you want to go more traditional with your pencil, you can choose a silvery metallic for, you know, the piece that's white on this image. Or you can have fun with it and choose whatever fabrics that you want. Once you've sewn that together, we're going to add the top part of our eraser. Here's where that felty by the yard, or not felty by the yard, felty by the roll comes in. You can't use a felty sheet, all right? So felty is available by the roll or in assortment packs. If you have a sulky assortment pack, it's not going to be long enough for this piece. So you'll need to pick up a pack of the light pink felty by the roll so that you can create not only this part of the eraser, but also the circle bottom, okay? Also, felty is on sale right now because it's part of our webcast specials. So if you grab up Felty right now, today, before midnight tonight, you'll get it at the special webcast price. So amazing, amazing deals. Once you add the Felty strip, then we're going to add our pencil top to the top of this strip. And we're going to do the same thing we did to sew this curve. Um, however, now we're sewing the curve to a straight piece. So we're going to match up the centers and place a pin. And then at the sewing machine, you can match up the first edge that you're going to start with and then slowly move that curved piece along your straight edge as you sew. This is going to create really great dimension and make sure that our pencil has a nice point to it. All right, so now you can see it's looking a little weird because we have that fullness, right, with the pillow piece. But don't worry about it. We're going to stuff it. It's going to look great. All right, so now we want to add our cute little personality to our pillow pal. And you can certainly change up the personality of your pillow. Uh, but this is the applique template that's included with the free pattern. So you can see it's a layered applique. We've got the black portion of the eyes and then the pupil and then the little uh, reflection circle right in the eyeball. We've also got the cheeks and then we have our cute little smile. So you can layer scraps of felty to create the personality of your choosing. If you would like bigger cheeks, um, if you want pink cheeks with a little red rosy cheek in the center, you could do that as well. You can add little eyelashes to the eyes. Um, you can even make a frowny pencil if you want. <laughs> Maybe that's for somebody who gets put in timeout. They have to be with the frowny pencil. The pensive pencil. I don't know. There's so many P's. We have to come up with a cute name. All right. So a layered applique is done the same exact way as a single fabric applique. It's just we're going to layer those pieces on be, and fuse them before removing the paper backing on whichever fabric is below those layers, right? So layer up your felty however you choose. Make sure that you have added that perfect applique fusible web to the back side and then remove it in layers for positioning your applique. 
So cute. So you'll fuse your perfect applique, cut out those shapes, layer them, and place them on the center of that rectangular main pillow piece. And well, we don't actually center it. You want to place it, you know, close to the pencil tip. So the pencil tip is kind of like the hat on your pencil pal. All right. So you will layer your appliques and fuse them. And now comes the hand embroidery option. If you want, you can certainly use the 12 weight cotton thread petites and simply hand stitch your applique however you like. A little whip stitch, a blanket stitch, a straight stitch, what have you. Or you can take this over to your sewing machine once you have it fused and you can do a blanket stitch by machine, straight stitch, you get the picture. Once your appliques are all stitched down, you could also swap the thread colors, of course, based on the colors of appliques that you have chosen. Okay, so now that our applique is on, all of our pieces are stitched together, we're going to form the pencil. So you simply fold it in half with right sides facing, and you're going to stitch along the pencil long edge and the upper triangle. Notice how there's an opening for turning along the long edge. You want to make sure to either mark that or place double pins where that opening is so that you don't accidentally just stitch it shut. I can't tell you how many times I do that. Almost with every project, I just get into the groove and I sew the whole thing and then I have to open up an area for turning right side out. So I highly suggest you use a removable fabric marker, mark an opening. Sometimes I even write the word opening along the opening area so I have a visual clue to stop sewing. You wanna also backstitch on either end of that opening so that when you turn it right side out, it doesn't unravel. All right, and yes, the bottom is still open at this point. So after sewing this, we're gonna add our eraser bottom. So this is a circle that's cut out of the light pink felty, and you wanna use a lot, a lot of pins to secure your circle to uh, the circle of your main pillow piece, all right? So now we're sewing even more curves, but I have to say that when you're sewing on the felty, it just sews like butter. So once you have your base pinned, you'll take it to the sewing machine and sew that the entire circle as one continuous line of stitching. That's why we have our opening along the long edge of the pillow so we don't compromise the look of that circle along the bottom of the pillow. Then what, once that is done, we're just gonna turn our pillow right side out through that opening. And you can kind of give it a little finger press from the inside or if you have a turning tool or even the edge of a clear ruler, I always like to go along the seam allowance. Just make sure it's nice and flat before we start stuffing it. Um, and you can you know, press it open using one of those tools. Then you are going to use a bunch of polyester fiber fill or the fiber fill of your choice and stuff, stuff, stuff until your pillow is nice and plump. You wanna start with that pencil tip to make sure that your fiber fill gets all the way in there and then you can start building out the rest. Once it's nice and plump, all we have to do is close our opening so you'll just want to do a little bit of hand sewing, um, a slip stitch or a whip stitch to make sure that your opening is nice and shut. And then you have your adorable pencil pillow pal. I mean, it's the cutest thing. I love it so much. All right, here's another image of it. I mean, and someone asked the size and I didn't write it down. So I'm just going to go back to our pattern cover and I'm gonna enlarge it, bear with me here, just so we can see 
the size of this guy. Oh, come on. Well, there we go. So it's about 22 inches long, 10 and a half inches around, and about four inches wide. So it is rather large. I mean, I think that just adds to the fun and the personality of it. It would look so cute as like a bolster pillow on a little couch, or like I said, a reading nook in a new teacher's classroom or an established teacher's classroom. I would love to see, you know, all the colors of the rainbow, maybe in an art room, something like this. It's just so cute. And you could give little different facial features for each one. Um, and it would be a great tool for teaching colors to preschool classes, things like this. So just, just love it. All right, let's see. Karen says, I like using a ladder stitch to close the opening. Great tip. Um, yep, an artist would like it too. Kids would totally love this. Uh, Jana says, I always leave the tiniest hole to turn things inside out. <laughs> it's much easier to do your hand sewing when you do it that way as well. I just like to make sure I can stick my whole hand in there. So I kind of measure it's about five inches or so is what I need to get in there so I can really get make sure it's nice and plump. And I like to really fill the fiber fill along the seam as well to make sure that it stays, you know, pressed open um, and nice because sometimes you'll get it nice and plump and full and there's like a bump along the seam allowance and you got to go in there and kind of, you know, maneuver it a little bit. I've also seen people use like strips of the perfect applique fusible web and they will actually fuse the seam allowances open um, in a project like this. So before turning it right side out, you would fuse your seam allowances just using like a quarter inch strip of the perfect applique fusible web, fuse them open. And then when you turn it right side out, you don't have to worry about any of that. Your seam is nice and flat and perfect uh, throughout the life of the pillow as well, because it'll stay with it. All right, Susan says, great gift idea for a friend. Perfect, would be a great travel pillow. It is a little large, but it would be nice if you could stuff that in your suitcase. It's almost like a little body pillow for a kid, right? <laughs> uh, Marilyn says, can't wait to make one for my grand grandson. Great for a car trip, absolutely. And nice for college kids as well, totally. Diane has a great tip. She says, I would embroider the name of the school my grandchildren attend for their rooms. Love that idea. Uh, you know, on the side of a pencil where it says number two, you could totally personalize that with the teacher's name um, and gift it to the teacher on the first day of school. I think they would just love that for their classrooms. All right. Bonnie has a great tip too. Uh, when you sew to the opening and backstitch, if you turn your piece 90 degrees and sew off the edge on either side of the opening, it makes sewing it closed easier as the fabric automatically turns in for you. Great tip, Bonnie. Thank you so much. I'm going to try that every single time now. Love it. Uh, Rhonda says, my daughter-in-law is a substitute teacher, and I can see her taking this to the elementary school each time she teaches a class. The kids would enjoy it. Absolutely. I think almost all of us know a teacher. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are so many teachers out there, and they deserve to be appreciated so, so much, um, especially this time of year when all the kids are coming back with all of their summer energy and just, you know, bless their hearts. We got to, we got to, you know, gift them all the things that we can. And if we can use our fabric stash and our handy work, um, they just appreciate it that much more. It's so, you know, I don't know, so much more special, I guess, but a coffee card also always works. <laughs> all right. So another thing I wanted to make your, you all aware of, aside from are in the hoop sugar skulls webcast happening in 
about an hour and a half over at sewingonline.sulky.com. This webcast is absolutely free, and we will be joined by Sue O'Very of Suki Sews, and we will create these adorable little sugar skulls um, to use as air freshener covers, gift card holders, gift bag tags, uh, candy pouches, lollipop covers. The list goes on and on for what you can use those for. While you're over at sewingonline.sulky.com and registering for that event, I also have a brand new embroidery sewing session up on the site. I'm super proud of this one and I can't wait for you all to check it out. So brand new up at sewingonline.sulky.com is our creative rope baskets embroidery sewing session. So the difference between a free webcast and an embroidery sewing session, you might be asking. A free webcast is kind of like what we do here on So What, except I'm joined by a fantastic designer, teacher, influencer in the sewing, quilting, crafting, embroidery world, typically, and they take you through a project from start to finish with tons and tons of photos and sometimes videos are included and you get to talk to the designer themselves. Um, there's Q&A uh, portions. We give away all kinds of door prizes. It's really, really a special event and it's free to attend. When you sign up for one of our sessions, our sewing sessions, these are more in-depth, almost like a course, like an online course, except it's on your own time at your own leisure. So there's really no end date. You don't have to start it at a specific time. Um, you don't have to be live. It's totally led by you and how you like to learn. Uh, the embroidery sewing session for our creative rope baskets is $19.99. And with your purchase for this session, you will get a brand new embroidery design in two sizes from Embroidery Library and Urban Threads. They created this sewing themed design so you can decorate your sewing room with your rope basket. You can celebrate National Sewing Month, which is coming up in September. And it's such a beautiful design that was digitized and designed specifically for this embroidery session. You will get that design in two sizes, absolutely free once you register. You will also get all access to 11 video tutorials. Along with the videos are step-by-step -step instructions with full color photography to guide you through every step of making a rope basket in tons of different ways. So if you've never made a rope basket on your sewing machine before this class is for you. If you've made one, but you wanna try it again, you wanna add embroidery to your rope basket, that's right, we're gonna embroider right on the rope itself. You'll learn how that goes together. We're also gonna learn how to add all kinds of embellishments. So does everyone want to see like all the rope baskets or a collection of rope baskets that I have created. Liz is saying, is there a kit? Yes, there is a kit available for the rope baskets. You get 100 feet of rope and it's the right rope to use because there is a difference. You wanna make sure that you get the rope that we included in the kit so that you can embroider through it easily and sew through it easily. It comes with 100 feet of rope. It comes with all the thread that you need to create this special design that you will get just for signing up. It comes with some faux leather, some uh, rivets for some special embellishments that I'll take you through in all the videos. Um, let's see, it comes with Ultra Solvy Stabilizer, which is what we want to use when we're creating a rope basket. It's a whole slew of stuff in the kit for only $39.99. So if you're grabbing up that Sugar Skulls kit today, you wanna to get to the free shipping threshold, you know you're gonna join us for rope baskets, grab up the kit today and then you'll get free shipping no problem. So 
here's the deal. I'll, I'll show you the different baskets you can create. This is way beyond just a basic rope basket tutorial, which you may have seen out there because it's a super big trend right now. I am seeing them everywhere with and without embroidery, all kinds of stuff. So I took it steps further to add some designer elements to the rope baskets. And I think that even if you've made a rope basket before, you will love these additions. Um, you will no longer go to Target to purchase some baskets ever again because you can make them your own self. And they're so fun. I definitely got addicted to making rope, rope baskets, which is why there's 11 videos because I just was like, oh, but we could do this and we can do this and we can do this. All right. So your basic basket and you'll learn how to make all kinds of different sizes and shapes um, with a little bit of simple math and measuring. This is the biggest one that I made and it has the beautiful sewing theme design. It's called Vibrant Notions Wreath. And again, it comes in two sizes. If you only have a four by four hoop, you can make a small basket because we have a four by four size of this design. If you have larger capabilities for hoops, if you have a six by 10, you can make a large basket like this. So this is the basic basket you will learn how to construct and embroider. You will learn different ways of finishing off your basket as well. You'll also learn how to add fabric strips. Um, this is a really great way to use some leftover fabric strips. You can add them as an accent or you can add fabric strips to your entire basket um, right along your embroidered base. I will also show you how to add a fabric base either during construction or after your basket is complete. It looks really pretty with a cork fabric um, or a micro suede, a faux leather, or you can even use sulky felty on the underside of your basket. It gives it a nice little barrier between the backside of the embroidery and whatever shelf or table you're placing it on. You can also add purse feet to your basket base, and that'll make it sit up a little bit you know, more off of your table surface and it gives another designer element to your basket. I'm gonna show you all kinds of different handles to create using some beautiful faux leather from Sally Tomato, which is also included in the kit. This is one handle style and they are connected with these awesome rivets that go through the rope, all right? You can also create some square handles using those same rivets. This is more of that target style of basket I was talking about. I will also show you how to create embroidered fabric inserts in, I don't even know, 500 ways. Here's another style of insert using those little rivets to attach it to the bottom of the basket. I just, I mean, I went rope basket crazy and I think all of you will too, honestly. Again, so, so fun to create. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to change up the shape of your basket. I call this the banana boat basket. Would be really great for bread or at the center of a table as a centerpiece. This one features a little bit different design and a different way of finishing the basket as well as some creative rope handles. You can also, of course, instead of making a basket or in addition to, you can create a set of placemats, a table topper, a set of coasters, and you simply stop your, uh, or instead of curving up your rope basket, you will make them flat. So lots and lots of things to learn during this embroidery session. I take you through everything step-by-step step in a clear, concise video format. And I'm just so excited for you guys to experience it and watch it and enjoy it. Like I mentioned, the only place to get this brand new Vibrant Notions Wreath design from Urban Threads and Embroidery Library is by registering for our embroidery sewing session. 
So these would make really great gifts for your sewing friends or just simply, oh, I have to organize all of these now. Um, or really great ways to organize your sewing stuff in your sewing room. I wanted to show you one last thing and that is you'll also learn how to create a personalized label. So if you want to create a set of these and have them on your shelf, you'll learn how to create a personalized label for the front of your basket and attach it in a really creative designery way. So I hope that gives you, you know, a huge overview of our brand new embroidery sewing session. Now this is available for purchase right now, but the course will not go live. Well, it's not a live course. The course will not be active until September 12th. Okay, so registering right now secures your spot in the class. And then that'll give you time to purchase up your kit, gather your materials, get everything ready so that on September 12th, when all the videos are available, you will get an email saying, hey, your class is ready to view. And then after that date, you can watch at any time at your leisure, review um, any of the lessons and really create a custom rope basket that you will absolutely love. All right, lots of people saying, I can't wait to try making them. Looks really cool. If you don't have an embroidery machine, great question. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, you can still watch the videos for creating a basic rope basket, attaching that cork base, using a uh, purse feet if you so choose. Um, there are not purse feet in the kit, but there are the lovely rivets in that really pretty gunmetal finish. So you can still create a basket with, you know, different handles, a basket with the faux leather accents, a basket with a base. You could also do an applique design and do a fabric insert on your rope basket. And uh, the fabric insert tutorials are also included with the session. So you don't necessarily have to have an embroidery machine, only, of course, if you want to add machine embroidery. So this class really is for everyone. Can rope baskets be washed? Well, that is a great question. I will find out. At, um, you know, when we remove the stabilizer, we submerge it in water um, and then it just dries. So you might be able to just kind of spot clean them um, as well. All right, Jana says, should I put it on my wish list or just buy it right now? I will say uh, the rope basket kits will only be on sale until September 30th. So if you are interested, um, I would purchase one because once they're gone, they're gone on these rope basket kits. Um, we had to source a lot of materials for them. So I just wanna make sure if you do want one, be sure to grab one up because buying all that stuff separately can get really costly. And uh, I think Sulky is being very generous in pricing that kit at only $39.99. So grab up your Sugar Skulls kit for today and then grab up your rope basket kit so that you're ready to go on September 12th when the class is ready for viewing. All right, loving the basket ideas. Thank you. Love the varied hoop sizes. Yes, we wanted to really include everyone. Leah's asking, how long does it take to complete a basket? So that's kind of a loaded question because it really depends on the size of basket that you're going to make, the types of embellishments you're going to add, and whether or not you're doing the machine embroidery. So I can't really answer that. Um, but I will say if you're just making a basic basket without any embellishments, no embroidery, um, you could probably create it in two hours or less, you know, depending. Again, it's going to depend on your confidence at the machine, your skill level, how much you're stopping to measure, all kinds of things. So sorry, I can't answer that to a T. <laughs> All right, loving the beautiful baskets. Thank you, Brenda. Loving the thread colors. 
yeah, the embroidery design is so unique. I've embroidered it here on a piece of felty as a fabric insert, but there's all these layers of colors. So it looks like there's a ton of thread being used, but in reality, we're only using six thread colors to create all these different shades because the colors are layered so differently. So I love that uh, Embroidery Library and Urban Threads have partnered with us on this event. They really are the pioneers of the embroidered rope basket trend, in my opinion. And, you know, they have lent their expertise to this course. And then we've just really taking, taken it um, to new heights. You're, you're just going to learn so, so much with all of these videos. So I can't wait to hear how you all enjoy it. Um, all right. Let's see. Susie's asking, can you use any embroidery or does it have to be loose? Well, all of that is explained in the session. There's an entire lesson on embroidery design choices, what's going to work for a rope basket and what's not. So I really encourage you to dive into those lesson pages when they're available on September 12th. You're just going to learn so, so much and really get, um, you know, great advice for where to start and then where to take it, you know. Also, since the kit includes 100 feet of rope, um, you can probably get two baskets out of that kit depending on how big you create your basket. Now, if you make your first basket and you just keep going, 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 and all of a sudden you only have, you know, five feet of rope left, um, you probably will just be left with a coaster for your second stitch out. <laughs> so be aware and plan accordingly. If you want to create two baskets out of your kit, you might get a large and a small or two medium size ones. So um, there's enough rope to play with to do, you know, different styles and different embellishments. And when you start the course, I really encourage you to kind of watch it start to finish um, before you decide what type of basket you want, because there's so many different varieties and ways to personalize it and change it up. So I want to make sure that you plan the basket that you want to end up with before you just start making a basic basket. And then you realize all of these other things you could have, um, you could have done. All right. All right. Yep. Making coasters is a great way to use leftover rope. Absolutely. All right. Some of you are saying you've all signed up. That's great. I'm super excited about it. As you can tell, also be sure you are all signed up for In the Hoop Sugar Skulls happening at 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com. I don't want you to miss this free class with Sue Overy of Suki Sews. Plus, you'll be able to get your cute caramel apple applique design absolutely for free. And all you have to do is register for the event. And then you can play around with your cute caramel apple design and change that up and personalize it. You can even put a little name or monogram on that too and gift it to some little ones for the fall season. All right. So... Without further ado, I'm going to head on over to sewingonline.sulky.com and get ready for all of you to join me in about an hour for our In the Hoop Sugar Skulls. Also, be sure to grab up your free pencil pillow pal pattern at sulky.com and have fun with that project as well. And um, happy back to school to everyone, teachers, students, kiddos. Um, and I'll see you all at 2 p.m. Eastern time over at sewingonline.sulky.com. Have a great rest of your day.